had a good celebration on Saturday night. So we've been celebrating 99, um, your independence birthday in Lithuania. So congratulations once again. How you say like a Daus Limes, Bralukai? Yeah, good, okay, very good. So I'm, I'm going to tell you about um, uh, the topic which is called, we are calling business excellence. And I, I don't know what is about like in your case when you are talking about lean, but there are so many companies who are saying that they're doing lean. But when you are like trying to compare them, what is the level they're doing that, you know, so you find that they are very different. As we in Lithuania say that we all of us, we are playing basketball. Even all of us, we are coaches of basketball. But once we get on the court, you realize that the way I play basketball is very different from the way Porzingis is playing, yeah? Okay, so let's see, what are the Champions Leagues when we're talking about process excellence here, yeah? So my agenda roughly is going to be about how changes are implemented within an organization. What is that process excellence? And uh, what does the top league of business process excellence look like? And how could we get there? So in Harvard Business School, um, few, you know, like professors, businessmen, uh, they talked about congruence model that like some year ago. They're saying if you want to manage your strategy or to manage your changes within organization, you have to, to keep in mind these four main dimensions or parameters. In our language saying, you know, to make it more simple than, than it is, I would say that companies when they're doing change management or they want to implement strategy, they have to be careful about these four elements, which is infrastructure, structures, processes, and people within organization. I'm not sure how in your case, but in Lithuania, all these 25 years, it was so much about infrastructure and structure. We've got so many funds of European Union, you know, like building new machineries, new walls, new roads and everything. Actually, not of them are uh, still new, you know. We've been also working so much about responsibility, structures, centralizing, decentralizing, and so on. And I think we were not so, many, so much working about processes because sometimes you can have brand new machineries and systems which would be inefficient, and you may have people who are not willing to work there. So what is the potential when we are talking about processes and people in any business you are, you are making? So processes, it's very interesting. This guy is called like a, some kind of a, a quality process management father, you know. In 1950s, he said like, in every process you are, do, you are doing within your organization, 50% or 40% of the processes which you are doing are not value adding. Which means if you set an invoice for your customer and you would present it step by step what you were doing on your process, like the customer would reject 40% of that. He would say, I'm not going to pay you for this because you were waiting for two days to do something. I'm not going to pay you for this because you made a mistake on your own and this is not my fault. And people, you know, get started, but not in United States because United States were like after the Second World War, you know, some quite in a good shape. So he moved to Japan, and he met this guy. He's Taichi Ono, one of the former Toyota executives at that time, and they got very interested. Why they got very interested? Because the productivity of Japan and USA that time was eight times difference. So of course, when you are hungry, and you are looking for the chance to survive, you are interested in uh, very you know, different ideas. And this guy said, okay, you are very right, but I think there are 99% of what we do on our businesses or processes, which is waste, which is non-value adding. And this is actually a huge potential. So companies should look like through the moment when they are getting an order to the moment they are completing, what are the steps during their processes uh, are non-value adding, like waiting, correction times, motion, transportation, inventory, and all that kind of stuff. That guy even said, like, the only place that work and motion are the same thing is in the zoo, where people pay to see the animals moving around, you know. Otherwise, you know, where so much you say, I'm moving, so I'm doing something. Movement is non-value-adding activity. So what do Toyota say? Because Toyota is perceived as one of the best companies in, in the world in terms of process management. What they say that their strategy is great process management. And what they say next, we achieve great results when average people manage great processes. It sounds a bit rude, like average people, which means regular people, not like, you know, genius or hero or superman or superwoman or whatever. 
and they say next, we have noticed that our competitors often achieve medium or even low results when great people manage poor processes, which means your organization is based on two superwomen or two supermen, which one of these is flying away, you know, all the company is in trouble. So this is very different strategy from the ones we are used to know uh, sometimes in organizations. Where is the next potential? The last year, Harvard Business School, they made like a survey, uh, especially in the United States, and what they found out there, that seven people out of 10 in your organization are not actively engaged at work, which I'm saying they're bringing their bodies from eight to five at their work. Five o'clock, they're trying to bring their bodies back home, or somebody's even helping them to bring it back, and this is a huge, huge uh, problem. And it, on the other hand, it's a huge potential. United States are losing four, $500 billion every year because people don't want to work at work. So put a good person in a bad system and the bad system win. No doubts about that. So we are more about good systems and good people and I think you could have like a very good potential regarding that. So what is my conclusion out of this, you know, several slides I showed to you? Organizations begin to see more clearly that good change management or strategy implementation demands not just structures, infrastructures, but also good process management and people empowerment. So what is business process excellence? Business process excellence, actually I'll show you like in a few slides, there are some techniques, principles, systems, and all of them are designed for continuous improvement of business processes while seeking reduction of waste and increased value for the customer. Easy saying, you know, there are different kind of practices through all these years created within the world to make the processes faster, better, cheaper. So this is the main point of everything what you're doing the, with the processes is to make your processes faster, better, cheaper. And faster, better, cheaper, which means more profit for organization. Business process excellence is not cost reduction. So I say, oh, we fired, you know, some people there. So we are now like lean. So this is about, this one is about reanimation, you know, or surgery when you're bringing someone to the hospital. And this one is about, you know, being, you know, health or going to the sport gym. And th these are very different processes. So don't mess it up, these two processes, because, you know, um, then you will get in a, in a big trouble. So what is that goal? As I mentioned before, the main goal of improving the processes is to make them faster, better, and cheaper for a higher profit. So in a few slides, I'll show you lots of examples. How does it look like in the practice? And sometimes companies, they get into that kind of trap because they start to copy-paste the board. Oh, what a nice board. Let's make it happen in our organization. But somehow it does not work, you know, after two weeks or one month and so on. Because the purpose is not about visualization so much, but it's also about the value for the business. How much money does it earn for me? So what does it look like? What does it look like? When we are talking about process excellence, because I'm talking about very general wor word like process excellence, and what are the main methods normally these multinational companies especially applying? So lean is, Today is number one, like globally, if you see, like so many companies, especially uh, in the United States, uh, Europe, you know, and Japan, you know, and uh, different kind of uh, places, they're applying that. But there are some others as well. Six Sigma, maybe you heard, is coming originally from Motorola, and it was like most uh, promoted by Jack Welsh afterwards in General Electrics. Also, training within industry, uh, balance core cars, and so on. So, all these topics are going under the um, umbrella of the business process excellence. So my conclusion is not just stick to one topic. Do not stop with one good practice and create your own road towards business process excellence. So try to understand what are these practices are beneficial and value creating for your businesses and don't try to copy paste Toyota or some other organization and build your own journey how you're going to do that. So how does this journey look like? So when we are talking about process excellence, these are the layers they are saying within organization, how, how does it look like? And these three layers, you will, you will see lots of examples from my side here. They are visible and they're easy to imitate because you can make a picture, you can come back to your organization, give it to your designers, and they're going to design you and make it. And these are ones, they are coming from leadership. 
And this is how the culture of organization is built up. Okay, so how does the first layer look like? People are getting on 5S, let's say, you know, they're looking how to set everything in order. They are training the people to identify waste in their processes. They are calculating the workload of the people on the process and trying to reorganize it. Also, you know, like uh, making uh, pool systems for uh, inventory management, for levelizing the processes like Heijunka, avoiding mistakes and so on. Some of the examples, you know, I'll show you uh, in, in, in the other slide. Also, they're working for worker standard standardization, automation, visual management is very important. Visual management in the terms of that everyone who is getting it on any process in your organization, within 30 seconds can say if the process is run good or bad. So we have to build an environment where people see the problems immediately. Once they see it immediately, they can react to the problems immediately. So how does it look like in practice? I think you know, like uh, maybe this is the Konas, uh, the company like uh, uh, on, on, on the way to Vilnius, yeah? So before and after, yeah, so this is how it changes. Or some documents here, you know, the stock keeper before, you know, she, she couldn't find the right document, so she maintained it by different colors and angles. And nobody been in this company here in Lithuania, but you can see that one document is not in the right place. Yeah, here it is. Huh? Before she said like it took for her like half an hour to find the right one. And I don't know if there is any education which is training people to find fast, you know, missing things. I don't think so, yeah? So we would have to sustain our working environments to make it happen. Or visually manage, you know, some files or documents when you see that you are overloaded. Or, you know, some projects uh, in production for um, uh, changeovers. Or like in, in the office, claim ad administration process, it was decreased from 89 days to 24 days by standardizing the processes. Or changeovers on the other machineries and so on. What is the second layer? We're talking about improvement methods and tools. And what are they? We're talking about defining the process, um, analyzing the process step by step, also looking for the entire picture of the business, how the processes look like. We are even like prioritizing what are the main problems or priorities we have within, within the organization by Pareto. And then we are getting to the root cause analysis, trying to un understand why does the problem come uh, in organization. We are trying to involve as well people to give their ideas on a daily basis that they could improve their processes on a problem solving, better planning, project management, or even practical trainings in the process. There are so many organizations who are just giving a sheet of paper for the people just to sign at the beginning, you know, that he agreed and he understands how to behave in the process. And then afterwards, you know, that guy is going on the process and he doesn't know how to do. So it has to be very practical way how to do that. So for example, in this organization, 720 employees, they have implemented 391 ideas a year. So implemented ideas, yeah? Oh, this is one of the best Kaizens we had in Lithuania a year ago. One operator, he made an improvement here, which cost 200 euros in a bottleneck machine, and now it saves for organization almost 90 town euros. So what, are, what do I want to say by these examples here? I want to say that sometimes organizations, they are so much related on the big projects which are coming from top to down. Just CEO knows and his management team what has to be improved in this organization. What I want to say, don't lose your potential within people. If they are trained in a well manner how to do that, they have tons of ideas what could be improved because they are the best experts of their processes. Or another organization, maybe I'm not going to, to, to get some, so much you know, on the examples here, on a problem solving tools, PDCA they call it, on another example, or even like screening of candidates, which is HR process. You know, like the, for, uh, at, the, at the beginning it took for them seven days to recruit the person, and now it takes five days, and this is what they save out of that. The third layer is about business process strategy management and indicators. And you have to look for the, how you deploy the strategy within the organization, how you escalate the problems immediately to the CEO level, how you have the meeting systems, who meets whom, and what are your uh, business indicators to monitor uh, your daily performance. Why do you have to do that? Why do you need to monitor your performance on a daily basis, not just on a financial data which you are getting once in a month? 
And why do you have you know, to record all the problems and to escalate them immediately to the top? In Harvard Business School, for 60 years, they made like an experiment which was called the Hofstra experiment. And they found very good uh, conclusions out of there. But they found also another conclusion which was saying, when people start to track their performance on a daily basis visually, and they know that on a daily basis they have to escalate that uh, problem up, it increases your efficiency of the process up to 20 to 30 percent. Not even by doing nothing, but just trying, starting to track your performance. So why does it happen like that? Because people start to share, you know, the problems with the other team members, and they know that they can get support from the uh, upper layer of the or of organization. And this is how does it look like. I think this is one of the most impressive examples we have here uh, in Lithuania. 300 managers, this is Girtek, a logistics company. 300 managers, they're stepping up. In five minutes, they are updating what is their performance, what are the problems, who is responsible, how long it's going to take. If they don't solve it, they escalate it to the higher level, to group leaders. If these guys don't solve it, they escalate it to the heads of departments. And if these guys don't solve it, they escalate to CEO. The CEO of 8,000 8, people, 10 o'clock in the morning, in 15 minutes he already knows what are the problems of organization, who has to deal with that, and who is responsible with it. The fourth layer is management of staff and training and control. This is another point, also standardization for managers, training programs, teamwork and rewards, leadership, and so on. And the fifth one is the hardest one, when it comes to the culture of the company, which means supermans can be changed, but it's already on the DNA of the organization, which is people are willing to eliminate all the waste. They want to improve their processes every time. They, want, they are based on facts and data, long-term thinking, social responsible, and global sustainability. So these are different leagues. And I put, you know, do you know this one? This is Latvian Basketball League. What is the higher one? Euro Cup, maybe. What about Euro League? What about NBA and what about All-Star Game? So everybody might say that we are doing this and you are doing this, but my point is which league you are playing in. And this guy, I think you know him, yeah? Here's Porzingis on the feed for the Jack. <laughs> Okay, so my conclusion is organization must identify their progress on the road to business process excellence and have a clear vision for the future. So what must be done to get to the top league? So my advice would be like that. Pay special attention to good process management and people empowerment. This is, I think, the future uh, opportunity for all the businesses. Better processes and better people empowerment. Apply different practices and methods how to do that. Create your own road. Don't try to copy-paste someone. But identify your progress on the road to business process excellence and have a clear vision for the future. And study the road of the industry leaders. If you have a chance to see your industry leaders, go and see them. Identify what their results. And if it's possible, make your road shorter by using their examples. And invest into, into the education of your people, skills improvement, thinking, and ability to work in a team. So in the Champions League, organizations, business process excellence is a part of the DNA and has become a mandatory condition on the road to better results and higher profit. So it's already a mandatory, um, let's say, requirement for the business. So good luck, good luck on your journey. Hope to meet you in Champions League. Valdius.